Welcome back to Organic Chemistry 2 Synthesis. Uh, today we'll be looking at another important class of organic chemical compounds, the amines. So we'll start out with a bit of history and uh, we'll continue with some of their important physical properties which determine their reactivity. Let's jump straight in. So historically amines were referred to as alkaloids. Yeah, so this name comes from Arabic. Um, I'm just gonna give you the pronunciation guide here. So alkali, yeah, which uh, apparently translates to ashes of plants. So it was um, uh, realized very early on that uh, if you combust plant matter um, in the presence of some salts, um, you essentially get uh, residue which reacts basic or alkaline. Yeah, so this is where the name um, comes from. Yeah, so uh, these uh, alkaloids um, are essentially naturally occurring compounds um, with at least one nitrogen atom. Let me just write this down here. Yeah. So, uh, as I said, naturally occurring compounds with at least one nitrogen atom, like for example here, yeah, uh, where we see morphine, which was isolated from opium poppy in 1804, and we see here our amine functionality. Yeah, so uh, amines are indeed very important in biological processes. Um, uh, so synthetic uh, psychoactive uh, compounds uh, or pharmaceutically active compounds usually contain some form of uh, amines. Um, as you see here, for example, this is uh, methyl amino 1 phenyl uh, propane, yeah? or um, uh, as it was uh, uh, sold as or given out to uh, troops in World War II as pervitin. Yeah? Uh, today it's called uh, crystal meth. So um, uh, obviously with some psychoactive uh, um, function. Um, but uh, we have also other synthetic uh, um, amines, like for example here melamine, yeah, which is obtained through the, from the cycle trimerization of cyanamide yeah, and melamine itself. So you can sort of imagine if you take three of these cyanamides and cycle trimerize these nitrile functionalities, you get here your aromatic heterocycle, yeah, so this C3 N3 ring, yeah, so this is the triazine core of a melamine, yeah, so an aromatic heterocyclic amine, uh, which is used uh, uh, for production of uh, melamine formaldehyde resins. Uh, but also interestingly, if you heat up melamine uh, and its precursors like cyanamide further, yeah, you essentially, there are some other um, uh, cyclization reactions involved, you eliminate ammonia, oops, ammonia, and you get here um, a compound based on these C6 and 7 ring structures. Yeah? So this reaction was first realized in 1834 by Justus von Liebig and uh, it was called Melon. Yeah? So um, uh, here you can actually see uh, one such reaction which leads to this, uh, to Liebig's Melon structure. So this yellow polymer which is growing here is in fact our Melon. Yeah? Uh, what you see here in this reaction, um, uh, this reaction was uh, referred to as the Pharaoh serpents. Yeah? And it's the thermal combustion of merc uh, mercury via cyanate. So uh, let me just quickly draw this in. So this is essentially mercury 2 uh, thiocyanate as CN2. Yeah, so um, uh, during this thermal com combustion, yeah, several processes are happening, but you are eliminating uh, um, cyanide, you are eliminating uh, H2S yeah, in the presence of uh, water from the air, so quite nasty byproducts as well as uh, toxic mercury, and all these gases essentially uh, um, help foam up this polymer matrix, which you see then here. Uh, Pharaoh's serpents 
uh, was sold as, a, as an evening entertainment during the Weimar Republic, probably not for too long exactly because of these uh, um, lethally toxic byproducts. So um, we can uh, classify our amines um, just as we classified our alcohols as primary, secondary, tertiary, but also quaternary amines. Yeah, so our primary amine has one substituent, like for example here in methylamine, uh, likewise secondary dimethylamine, tertiary trimethylamine. And uh, since we have a nitrogen uh, a lone pair on this nitrogen, which uh, um, can be quite readily protonated or functionalized, uh, we can also generate such uh, quite stable quaternary um, uh, amine salts here as uh, as tetramethyl ammonium bromide. Let's spend a brief moment to discuss the nomenclature of amines. So the way they are uh, named is you take the uh, name of the alkyl group and add the suffix amine. Yeah? Uh, and uh, to indicate the position of the amine group, uh, usually the numbering um, is inserted before the suffix. Yeah? So uh, sometimes you can also see the uh, numbering before the alkyl. Um, so in this case here, uh, we would start out at this end of the uh, um, alkyl chain. So uh, you could name this compound either butan-1-amine or 1-butanamine. Yeah? Uh, nitrogen uh, bonded alkyl groups are denoted with an italic N, yeah? as in this example here. So here you have um, n ethyl hexane 3 amine yeah? or here in this case n ethyl n methyl butan one amine yeah? um, and as we've seen on the previous slide yeah we can also form quaternary amines yeah so quaternary amines are named as the salts of the corresponding amine yeah and you indicate the ionic character of uh, these quaternary salts uh, uh, by adding this uh, ium here yeah so in this case tetramethyl ammonium chloride yeah, or here one ethyl, one methyl piperidinium chloride. Yeah, so this is pretty much as I said. Yeah, if we consider the amine piperidine, yeah, so it, that would look like this. Secondary amine, suopiperidine. and to indicate the uh, um, ionic salt character of, the, uh, of, uh, of a quaternary species, you essentially end the IUM. Yeah? So pi uh, from piperidine, you get your piperidinium. Yeah? Uh, when it comes to the numbering, um, it's IUPAC convention to choose the lowest possible numbering yeah, in relation to the uh, nitrogen atom. So here in this case, um, you could number the chain starting here, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah? So this would be your pentane. Uh, but we're starting in such a way yeah, as to uh, have the lowest possible numbering in relation to the nitrogen atom. So hence, 4-bromo-NN-dimethylpentane-2-amine. Yeah? Um, uh, when you incorporate amines into aromatic systems, there are a couple of other more unusual names. So here in this five-membered ring case, uh, we have pyrrole. Yeah, uh, the six-membered aromatic heterocycle here is pyridine. And according to IUPAC, so uh, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, um, uh, this compound here is referred to as aniline. Uh, yeah, uh, hence uh, para methyl aniline and para nitro aniline here. Let us now look at uh, the orbital geometries uh, in amines. Yeah? So, uh, as we mentioned before, nitrogen uh, in amines ha uh, has a free um, lone pair. Yeah? So, we could uh, consider this free electron pair as a fourth group attached to our nitrogen. Yeah? So, we get an overall tetrahedral arrangement around our nitrogen atom. And hence, we could uh, um, think, since we have four substituents, uh, of amines as chiral. Yeah? In practice, however, what is happening is uh, that there is a rapid interconversion between uh, these uh, amine enantiomers. Yeah? So we, you essentially have a very low energy barrier yeah, between these two states. 
So this is roughly yeah, 24 kilojoule per mole, which is not very much. So even at room temperature, uh, you would get a rapid interconversion between these um, S and R amines, as you see here, via a planar transition state in which you have essentially an sp2 hybridized nitrogen with uh, the unpaired uh, electrons situated in a p orbital yeah which is uh, uh, perpendicular to this plane in which you have now your methyl ethyl and hydrogen yeah so let's let's just draw this in so this is our transition state here yeah with a fairly low barrier between R and S and antimer, yeah. Exceptions to this are um, locked cyclic systems, yeah, where you, uh, where the nitrogen cannot uh, simply flip around so easily, yeah. So here uh, you have a mirror plane, yeah. So these two uh, molecules here are indeed mirror images. There is no way to uh, superimpose them by rotation or translation, yeah. So these are real enantiomers. And the same applies to quaternary salts here again with the mirror plane. Yeah, so two enantiomers of these amines. Let us recap briefly what we know about hydrogen bonding uh, before we discuss the uh, physical properties of amines in the bulk. Yeah, so hydrogen bonds um, are present in all polar protic compounds. Yeah, that means uh, compounds with polarized bonds um, uh, that contain hydrogen and usually some elements with free electron pairs yeah, that can hydrogen bond. Um, so here, uh, one such example is frozen water. Yes, yeah, depicted here at the top left hand corner. Uh, so frozen water is a three dimensional network of water molecules, which you see here in this, in this uh, um, well, ice lattice here. Uh, and we see um, uh, similar hydrogen bonding as well when we dissolve acid in water yeah, or base, yeah, here hydroxide in water. And we see the same effects for amines and carboxylic acids. Now, hydrogen bonding has a, a pronounced effect on the uh, physical properties of, of bulk materials. Yeah? So here we have three molecules that are roughly the same weight, yeah? ethane, methylamine, and methanol. Yeah? Now, as you uh, um, see, uh, the, uh, the boiling points of these materials are vastly different. So, yeah, so roughly an 80 degrees Celsius uh, difference here between ethane and methylamine, and another 70 degrees Celsius difference between methylamine and methanol. Yeah? And, uh, well, so the weight of these molecules doesn't seem to be contributing much to these, uh, to these boiling points. So it must be some other interactions, and uh, here they are. Yeah, so it's uh, van der Waals interactions, dipole-dipole interactions, and predominantly hydrogen bonding. Yeah, so for ethane, yeah, uh, we have some van der Waals interactions, but ethane itself is uh, essentially apolar. Yeah, so we have no dipole-dipole interactions or hydrogen bonding. Now, as we go to methylamine, yeah, we find all these three types of interactions, and the same for for methanol. Yeah. And the uh, difference in boiling points, which you see here, we can attribute to the strength of hydrogen bonding. Yeah? So in amines, yeah, hydrogen bonds are weaker. Yeah? So that, that's depicted here. Hydrogen bonds uh, between amines are weaker than hydrogen bonds in uh, alcohols. Yeah? Now, why is that? Yeah, uh, we have to consider uh, the electronegativities of these elements. Yeah, so uh, the uh, delta. Yeah, the difference of electronegativities in the NH bond yeah, is 3.0 for nitrogen, yeah, minus 2.1 for hydrogen, so 0 0.9. 
in the case of the OH bond, yeah, oxygen being a much more electro well being a more electronegative element, we have 3.5 minus 2.1. So 1.4, yeah. So a much more polar bond for the OH case, yeah. So um, hence stronger hydrogen bonding. This brings us to the end uh, of this quick introduction into amines. Yeah. Next time around, uh, we'll be looking at the chemical properties of amines and some of the reactions that we can do with them. Um, see you next time.